What's up, my pilots? Angry Poncho here, and we are back playing. Ah, it's weird. My first, the first thing I want to say is the Legend of Zelda. The Legend of Zelda, Morrowind. No, we're playing Morrowind with awesome Morrowind graphics and sound overhaul installed. God, to your graphics. Speak, traveler. Excuse me, Mr. Guard. So we've got a few things I'd like to do in this episode. The first thing I want to do is I forgot to get repair hammers. So um, rather than actually buying repair hammers, which this is so last year, right? I'm going to go in here to the... Uh, gosh, my sound is up way yes. too loud in my headphones. There we go. I'm going to go in here to the Fighter's Guild. And upstairs is Ada's Fire Eye. Look at her eyeballs. I can see why they gave her that name. Speak up, Dark Elf. What do you want? Are you here to join the Fighters Guild? Sure am. Sign me up. You are now an associate in the Fighters Guild. Work hard, follow orders, and you'll do just fine. Seek me out when you're ready for advancement. So check this out. When you click on advancement for any guild, it tells you um, basically what your status is, and it says your talents are noteworthy, noteworthy, but some question your depth of devotion. Perform more duties, and you'll earn your place. That means that you qualify, but you haven't done enough quests. And when I say qualify, it's built entirely into your, your stats. If you've got, for the fighters, for every guild, they have a set of, I believe, six or seven skills that they favor. And you have to have, I think, hmm, I don't, I don't know the exact details for each rank and each guild, but basically you have to have one skill that you're pretty good at, and you have to have one skill that you're great at for each rank. So I think by the time you get to really high ranks, you have to have a skill at like 80 or 90 to get up to get the advancement. But you only need to have like one skill that good. So, in that sense, it's it's difficult. It's made difficult to to be really high ranking in multiple guilds, and that is one of the reasons that we're playing multiple characters for this. Check this out. Everything that's in here is good. Let's take all of it. And as a member of the Fighters Guild, we were just officially officially inducted. That was the whole ceremony. She just told us. We get to raid these chests as, as often as we like, whatever town we go into. So it's, it's pretty great, actually. They're a free resupply, even if you never do any quests for the Fighters Guild. It's great. We're actually going to go next door and to the, build of, the Guild of Mages and do the exact same thing here. Which sort of may seem like exploiting the system, but I think it's, it's just too funny to not do. It's not, it's not you I want to talk to, is it? I don't remember. Look how good those tapestries look. Hello? You looking for me? Yes, Rannis Athras. We look, you look like the sort we could use. Will you take the Mage's Oath? Yeah! You're not a member of the Mage's Guild. When you're ready, you can get duties and ask about advancement. And again, we meet the requirements if we haven't done any quests. But, we meet the requirements to steal everything from their chests. So, cure disease potions, or scrolls, same deal. Soul Gem, Expensive Book, Divine Intervention, that's nice. Origin of the Mages Guild, Fortify Willpower, and Restore Magicka. Those are all wonderful, and I'm over-encumbered. Okay, I gotta put something back. Let's see, um... I need to make these bigger. My, see, my inventory's already full up over here. Look at how much... What, four, four rows that don't fit? I can make these windows larger. I don't know if I've talked about it before, but... You get the most utility out of a square window. That's how you show the most things. Assuming that there's square icons. Yes, there we go. Now I can see everything. I'm just going to put down some stuff here. Uh, the hammers are, are heavy, but I'm going to keep those. Um, I guess I could, get, I could put some of these bolts back. That would probably fix it. I don't even have a bow. They're not worth that much. You cannot place items in this container. What? That's... That's weird. Alright, I'll just drop them then. Fine. Be that way. That's ten pounds of bolts wherever they landed. I did put down I did put them down, right? Where do they go? I've heard a lot about you. Usually they sort of just appear where you put them down. I sort of dropped them at my feet here. And now they seem to have disappeared. They may have just landed underneath the rug or something. I can't like see them here. <laughs> anyway. It doesn't really matter, but another advantage of being a member of the Mages Guild is that down here in the basement they have all kinds of services for us, and the Fighters Guild has this as well. 
So there's a guy over here. Yes. Oh, woman. <laughs> hey! <laughs> I can't. Oh, I can't even do it. Old woman! Man! Oh, sorry. <laughs> I cannot think with these interruptions. Please leave me alone. Okay, cool. Can I buy some spells from you? Yeah, so check it out. They sell spells. And so these, these are kind of cool. You got restoring health. That's nice. Honestly, I probably want to buy that. Restore health 3 to 12 points. Yeah, I'm going to buy that right now, actually. That's good. That's a good thing to have. Feather, shield. I already have shield, don't I? Resisting fire. I don't need any of those. Okay, those are all... I don't need any more of that. Okay, cool. And then for bartering, you can buy and sell your goodies. I don't know if I need the scroll of... I'm going to sell her the mage's book thing. No, she doesn't want the books. Oh, well. But we could, we could always buy more health potions if we needed them here. Among other things, I like the tree down here. They must have got this growing by magic, because there's no way this tree is growing underground by itself. You're kind of getting caught in the branches there, lady. All right. No, I'm not persuasion. That's not what I want. We'll talk about that some other time. Here we go. Damaging spells. I still need... Let me see what magics I have. You have something to say to me? All we have is fire bite. Yeah, so I want to purchase the ability to use frost and shock as well. Oh, actually, we want paralyze too, don't we? Yeah, we want paralyze. I don't know. Hmm. Poison's cool. I don't know. Some some people are some are, a lot of people resist poison though, so it's not the most reliable thing. And a lot of creatures resist it. So they all do training as well. So you see this guy's got a lot more alteration stuff and illusion. Calm people. Those are actually pretty useful. I'm not going to worry too much about it right now. Water breathing. That's nice. Aha. Undoozy's open door. This is a good one to unlock things. We definitely want that. And levitate. We'll buy that as well. Yeah, we, spent, we just spent like 600 gold on spells, but they're all... Looking they're, for something in particular. They're all useful spells here. We now have water breathing and water walking, and if you look, we're pretty good at casting. Um, we have like 80% chance or more on everything except for the paralysis spell, the levitate spell, and the healing spell. That kind of sucks actually that the healing spell has got such a low chance to cast. Another build for this character would have been to replace block with restoration, just to see. But uh, I wanted to have a higher agility stat, so I chose block for that. Anyway, down here we have Mazaline. Mazalini? Marion. I'm just gonna call her Marion because that's her last name. She can do she's she's what's called a guild guide. And this is for the Mages Guild. They have these little platforms in the guild halls, and they can warp you from guild hall to guild hall. Teleportation, man. So we're gonna travel to Caldera? Is that alright? No, hang on. Didn't I want to go to Caldera for something? I have a list of things there I wanted to do. Mage's Guild Hall in... Yeah! We did want to go to Caldera. I was right. So we get warped in here to the... The Hall of Mages. The Guild of Mages. Now. Here, and then we arrived in Caldera. Hello! Alright. And everybody's just standing around. Just Shopping chilling. I think what this guy is useful. Mean? Is it? Is it you who has the... Uh, not everybody sells every spell. Yeah, this guy has a recall spell. That's nice. We might, we, we probably will purchase that one before too long. I think there's actually another person we can buy them from who might have better prices for us. What do you want? Anyway, we're gonna go in here to this door downstairs. We're gonna activate sneak mode, and we'll sneak up the stairs here. Because up at the top of this wizard's tower here in the guild hall, there's some valuable. Who sees me? What are you doing up here? You're not supposed to be standing up here. What the hell are you even doing here? There's usually no one in this place. Like, there's nobody for miles. Anyway, uh, <laughs> I mean, there's, there's nobody in this entire tower. I have no idea why she's here. I think... Oh, God. You know what she is? She's one of those... Shit. It's one of those mods that adds just random people who stand around, and here's one of them. God, it's like a sneak's nightmare. I wanted to steal this alchemy gear right here, because it's master's level alchemy gear. It's just awesome. You see, the quality is 1.2. So on our apprentice one, the quality is a half. So it's more than twice as good as what we have. 
Who are you? Can I... I'm gonna... I'm gonna do something a little bit dangerous here, so... Forgive me for saving... On video. But I'm gonna... I'm gonna attempt to, uh... I'm gonna start a fight, basically. So, this is what the persuasion is like. You have just six options, and you can't... You can't adjust the bribe amounts or anything like that. But... The cool thing you can do is you can taunt people. Uh, and effectively, that you, you have the three ways that you can increase or, or, or get what you want out of people. You can admire them, you can intimidate them, or you can taunt them. And based on your skill in, a, in speechcraft, you'll have a certain success rate here taunting people. So what you can do is, what I'm going to do, is get a little bit creative. I'm going to try and put the the windows in just the right place. Here we go. So I can just click over and over. So if you watch down on the, on the left side there, I'm failing like pretty much every time. Because my skill in Peacecraft is like zip. And here, you see I've lowered her disposition to zero. She really doesn't like us. And I feel like my Speechcraft shouldn't be so bad that... There we go. Success! Perhaps I will end yours! You know, so it's like we're taunting her, we're insulting her, it's like, Your mother was a hamster, and your father smelt of elderberries! Or it's like, Your mama's so fat! Or whatever. Uh, so apparently our insults are falling sort of flat, but eventually, uh, these taunt the taunts will get to her. You know, it's like, <laughs> Now go away, or I shall taunt you a second time! And there it goes, she says, That does it! <laughs> Charge! <laughs> And she's pissed at us. So what we're going to do here is get our spell it's ready. And when she attacks us, we'll kill her. Oh. Now, fear not. She's not important. And that is made clear by the fact that when she died, the game did not tell us she was important. So we also get to steal her good stuff, which includes an expensive robe. Nice undies. A journeyman mortar and pestle and her shoes. If I could take her hair, I would... But she, doesn't have, she doesn't have a wig on. Dang it, I'm over encumbered again. Ah. Was that her, her robe? You know what, her robe was better than ours. We'll just switch. <laughs> Drop the one we, were, we had. I don't need the shoes either. Okay, so now that she's incapacitated... See the bottom left-hand corner of the screen? I'll go into menu mode so you can... I can wave my mouse at it down here. Do you see me? Uh, that little symbol, if that's there, that means we're undetected when we're sneaking. So what we want to do is steal all this stuff. Very nice. Now, it's a little bit funny. Uh, I guess we don't want you laying here forever, do we? We'll get rid of you. <laughs> God! Knock the shoes right off of her! All right, so now that we have all this cool gear, I'm going to use it. So I'm going to grab the Master's Mortar and Pestle, put it on my person, and then you see that brings up the, the alchemy menu, which is a little bit hard to see here because my other two menus are overlapping with it. But hopefully you can tell what it says. So you, here you have the four apparatus that are involved in potion making. The mortar and pestle is required. It just lets you make potions. Uh, now the alembic and the, the calcinator, I believe, I forget, I always forget which is which, but one of them uh, increases the potency of positive effects, the other decreases the potency of negative effects, and the, the retort, I believe, is the one that increases the potency of both. So when you have all four of them, you get the most effective potions. And so once you have your apparatus picked out, you just want to use the best that you have, basically, in each category. And you only get one of each. Uh, then you got to start picking out your ingredients, and we've got a whole list of things here. So when you hover over an ingredient, you're, you can see how many... You can see a certain number of effects based on how good your alchemy skill is. So when we look at an ampule pod, we can see that it has water walking and paralyze. So if we mix it with anything else that has water walking or paralyze, I'm actually going to look for paralyze because that's a pretty decent uh, thing to try and get to come out of a potion. It should be worth a lot. So the whole idea for most of these potions is that we're going to just sell them. There's paralyze. So you see we have hackle, to hackle low leaf and an ampule pod both have paralyze as an effect. So we have a chance to make a potion of paralyze. And I did, it failed. Yeah, so I said a chance because it doesn't it isn't always successful. The skill is ba the chance is based on your alchemy skill. And I also believe on the quality uh, I don't actually know if it's based on the quality of 
the stuff, but I know it hinges on your skill in alchemy. There we go. We get three more chances here. Damn! That is bad luck to get four fails in a row like that. Because we started out with, with an alchemy skill of 35. That's, that's not bad. We should be able to do better than that. I guess maybe this is just a tough potion to make. Damn, there it goes. That's the last of our paralyzing ingredients, I'd bet, too. It's not a very common attribute. Anyway, there's a whole bunch of things that do rest restore fatigue, so... I'm gonna make a bunch of those. Yeah, there goes one. Jeez, it took eight tries to get our first successful potion. Anyway. So what? Yeah, I'm gonna do this for a while. And just try and make some awesome potions. It's not too exciting. I saw a drain of health. So, but you can actually make potions with ingredients even if you don't know... Where was that other drain health I saw? I wish there was a better menu for this so I could actually see their, the effects like listed next to the ingredients or something. Did I go past it? I must have. So, you can actually make potions with using the effects you can't see. So if like the fourth effect was of Comberry was was damage health or whatever, I could use this to to finish off my or my was drain health. I could use it to finish off my drain health potion. So there's that's one way to just attempt potion making is just to throw stuff together and see if it makes anything you can use. And then you can use process of elimination to try and figure out which ingredients are actually important. Yeah, see there you go, drain endurance. Now only one of these I see Drain Endurance on. So I'm going to take one away. Okay, that wasn't it. So one of these has Drain Endurance where we can't see. It's Black Anther. Okay, so I'll put that back. I'll take the crab meat out. Go away, crab meat. There we go. And we'll create a bunch of Drain Endurance potions. And you need at least two ingredients of, what, of whatever variety in order to attempt a potion. Drain Personality. Oh, it was coming from the bone meal. So you see, even with a low success rate, you're going to increase your, your skills, and you're going to make pretty decent potions after some practice. Oh wow, I've got a lot of Luminous Rustla. I should try and use those up so I don't have to carry them all the time. Water Breathing and Drain Fatigue. Okay. Show me Drain Fatigue. Failed. Failed! There's one. Gwarhide. Drain fatigue again? Nope. What else have we got here? Drain. St oh, there you go. There's those spore things, apparently. Oh, alchemy skill increased. Apparently, drain fatigue. Oh, and look at this. Violet Copernus and Luminous Russula, two of the most common mushrooms that you find. You see, I got 34 and 53 of them. They combine to make drain fatigue and poison. So that's pretty cool. So we're going to get a bunch of good poisons out of these. Nice. I like that. We're getting good stuff out of these now. So I'm trying to mix together the ingredients that I have the most of first. So let's see if I can get Restore Personality or Feather from that, that Heather we've got here. And I know it's not super exciting, probably, to watch me make potions, but... Oh, Drain Speed. Good enough. I know it's probably not super exciting to watch me make potions, uh, but that's part of the game. There you go. Drain some more personalities. Feather? Cool. I don't think that one even had Feather listed, but we found it. So if you're impatient, you can just throw stuff together until you get things that work. Here's some Restore Fatigue potions. And again, I'm just, I'm just trying stuff. I don't, have the, I, don't have the, I don't have the third and fourth ingredients of any of these memorized, so... Just guessing. Oop, that was what it was. Restore strength. Where's the other restore strength? Okay, it was there on the Conant flower. Failed! Yeah, and sometimes you work so hard to figure out what pair of ingredients it is that's giving you the effect that you're seeing, and then you, uh try and make something with it and you fail. It's like, oh, damn it. <laughs> Drain fatigue and water breathing. Wow, it's those two. So that's Quama Cuddle and Luminous Rustula. Quama Cuddle is pretty common because you get them from those little... Those, they look like little worms that you kill. Those are Quama Foragers. And they have apparently Drain fatigue and water breathing. Which is cool. 
Alchemy skill can increase to 38! Yes! It started at 35. It's gone up three times while we've been standing here. We've been collecting ingredients the whole time we've been playing so far. You see now, now it's paying off! There we go, Drain Fatigue. Where's that coming from? I'm betting it's the, yeah, the hypophagia. All your mushrooms pretty much have negative effects, it seems like. Scrib Jelly, Grave Dust. Quama Egg, that's got Restore Fatigue on it, I know. We can put the crab meat in there, whoops. Put our calculator back on. Ash yams. I'm just throwing stuff together now. Just guessing at things. Don't always don't always try the same ingredients. So drain health and drain strength. That's cool. Okay, I think it's these two ingredients. So oh no, ectoplasm was one of those things. Yeah, okay, we need all three ingredients to make that potion. Cool. So you see the benefit of what we're getting from this is more skill increases, like per minute than any other thing we've done so far. Pretty pretty much, this is the best way for us to get some level ups. And there there are, there is, is that it? Are you bugging out on me, game? Or is it really just six ingredients now? Okay, cool. It seems, I seem to have narrowed it down then. Fortify strength. I'm betting it's coming from, yeah, through wax. Cool. Is it draw wax or drew wax? I, I, I don't know, man. Drain fatigue. Okay, it's that one. I'm betting it's the black anther. No. The marshmallow. Okay, so now I'm just throwing stuff together, and I'm not. I'm gonna try basically every combination that's left because there's not too many. And I think. I think that's. Oh, there we go. There's one. All right, that's enough. We made a lot of potions just then. Look at the whole pile of potions in our inventory now. So those are probably, a lot of those are probably worth a bit. You can tell based on what bottle they default to. So I see like the kind of the fat brown, not really brown, but the fat dark green ones. They look kind of dirty. They're not going to be worth much. Like see this one's worth 56, 55. That's alright. The little blue ones are usually worth more. So you see 57, 50, actually wait a minute. These are not being organized at all by like bottle variety. I guess it randomly assigns them to bottles. Hmm, interesting. Either way. They're in real ghetto bottles, they're not in the nice labeled bottles that we buy at the store. <laughs> it's like making Skittle vodka or something, you've got it all in water bottles. Real classy, guys, real classy. Now the trick is, you, you don't really want to just try and sell people things that, that you've stolen from them. It's generally a good idea to just to not do that stuff. We need to go to Alvaroon anyway, so... Alvaroon is our next stop! Yeah, it's not a good idea to try and sell things to people if you've stolen something like that from them. The way the, way the game recognizes thievery is there's there's no fences in Morrowind. Uh, you can sell stolen goods to anybody. But if you try and sell somebody something that you've stolen from them, or something that's the same kind of item as something you've stolen from them, they'll accuse you of stealing it. So for example, yes. if, if Elbert here, Edwina, had like a soul gem laying on the table that belonged to her, and like the game recognized it as belonging to her, and I stole that soul gem. I could take that soul gem and sell it to somebody else. And then find another soul gem. Or even, like, buy a soul gem legitimately. And then try and sell it to her. Can't and she would accuse me, me of stealing her soul gem. And so she'd, that you know, call the guards and all that stuff. Questions. So we're going to barter with this lady because she looks like she's got potions. Yeah. So we're just going to sell her um, potions until she runs out of gold. And wow, that was fast. She does not have a whole lot of gold. 383. Do I have any less valuable potions? Those are mine. Yeah, like, basically everything we made is worth, like, 50-something. It's a little bit weird, actually. You'd think they'd have a wider variety of values. Maybe it's just based on our skill? I have no idea. Anyway, we're gonna get about 400 gold out of her for this. There we go. So that's nice. What look, at all the, do you need? look at all the sexy-looking ingredients she's got laying back here. And the ectoplasm is, like, bubbling. You see that? That's cool. The resin, that looks that looks so good. I hope, the, I hope this is I hope this is the thumbnail for the video. <laughs> that just that looks nice, man. So I'm gonna see who else has who wants who else wants to sell who wants to buy my potions. Potions for sale. Potions for sale. You're not interested in buying potions. 
See, only some people will buy certain kinds of goods, though. So, although you could sell stolen stuff to pretty much anyone, you can't sell... For example, this lady deals only in scrolls and apparently magic armor. So, we could sell her scrolls if we had some scrolls, but she doesn't want to buy our potions. I would love to sell some of these potions because I'm carrying around way too much stuff right now. I have only 25 pounds below my encumbrance, which means I'm chilling out with a lot of junk in my inventory. I know what I could get some of one of that. I know what could get rid of some of that weight. Let's use our repair hammers. So the way repair hammers work is it brings up this menu here, where you have all your goodies, and here's our short sword, which is so damaged. And you just click on them to try and repair. And you see it has a chance to fail, just like everything else. But armor is one of our skills, and so we're going to benefit from this in the long run. And at the top, you see the number of uses that are left on the hammer we have. You can only use a hammer so many times. Even if you're perfectly successful in repairing with it, it still only gets so many uses. I'm going to focus on getting our sword back in shape before I repair anything else. So you can see I'm going through a lot of hammers. Uh, and that's because I'm at a low skill. My armor skill is not very high. But recall... We can get repair hammers for free every time we go to a new city. And I'm going to try to just repair everything we have left now, just for the experience. But uh, we can get repair hammers every time we go to a new city and visit the Fighter's Guild. So armor is tough to raise, too. All that stuff, we only raised it less than one level. So it's a tough skill to raise, but we're going to be using it a lot. So. What do you want? I want to sell you potions, but you're not interested in buying them, it seems. Nope, you have spell making though. That's cool. Alright, we're here for a very particular person. I'm looking for a Mr. Gulls Lervi. And I believe he lives. He's not in the Mages Guild, but he lives here in Aldrun. Now, it's kind of weird when you first play Morrowind and you learn that you have the guild guides Sir. and you sort of can warp around from place to place. It's a little bit strange. Let me show you the world map where we are. So, here's Satanine where we started. You can see the parts of the map that look different. That's where we've explored. It's done, it's done in squares, so if we didn't go through this square, apparently. So there's Saitanin, and we went past Pelagiad, went past Moonmont Fort, and we went to Balmora. So this is the route we took in the last episode. You can see how far we went in terms of the size of the continent. About one-sixth the length of the continent, I guess. Yeah, sounds about right. And then about twice that far north would be Aldrun, which is where we are now. And so we warped up here. I'll probably take the Stilt Strider to get back, because I'd like to return to Satanine eventually. Oh, well, you know what? Well, yeah, look at that. We spent we used up 20 pounds of repair hammers in that. And the reason I wasn't interested in carrying around that much junk is because... You think they want to buy my potions? I'm sure there's a, a shopkeeper around here somewhere who wants to buy my potions. And the reason I'm interested in how much we're carrying is not only because I'd like to have, you know, a lot of, you know room left in my inventory to carry things, but I'd also like to uh, not have a whole lot of junk with me, because it's not worth much to be carrying it for no reason, and he doesn't buy potions. I figured he wouldn't when he only had lockpicks. In fact, I think this is a hangout for a very different guild from the ones where we were involved in. Of course, this character is not really going to do much. You, you might be wondering, since I joined the Fighters Guild and the Mages Guild, are we going to be doing a bunch of quests for them? Uh, short answer is no. Probably not. Um, this character is going to do the guild's work, or the, the blade's work, I mean. And it's, we're probably not going to spend much time. These are new. These look nice. Bookseller. Do you sell potions? Pawnbroker. You might buy potions. Pawnbrokers tend to deal on okay, basically okay. basically everything that's I'd broken. Quick. Where are you, pawnbroker? He okay. deals from his house. I'm not the most wealthy pawnbroker. He does buy them. He's got 500 gold too. He's got more more. He's got more gold than the potions lady in the in the guild of mages. There we go. We're getting quite a bit of value out of him. Take some of those. There we go. Cool. It's about 500 gold out of our pocket. Nice. Or into our pocket, rather. And a bunch of potions off our back. It's about another 10 pounds of junk we got rid of. Cool. So, somewhere around here is Gull's house. I wanna... Is he the one that lives in... I think he lives in here, actually. He lives in the manor district. 
Now, this is awesome. This is the interior. This is like the, uh, the skeleton of an ancient... I guess it's like an ancient mud crab. It's like a giant mud crab? I'm not sure. It's some kind of ancient crustacean, I would say, that lives in this chitinous shell, much like a turtle's shell. And when it died, it was so huge that like they built a city in it here, and, and now it's the expensive district for the city. So we're going to go up in here to the, another... Whoa! Oh god, what is this? Model load error. Use the default object. Sure, that's fine. Oh god. <laughs> that looks like um, a little bit of a Is problem there. That you speak with now, oh, yeah. I'm busy. What the hell's going on here? That's a bug. I don't know what's going on with that. We're not, we're not going to be spending a whole lot of time in, the, <laughs> in here, though, so I'm not too worried. But back here in the back of... So the, the giant mud crab, basically, that this place was built in. <laughs> I'm not sure what's a mud crab, but I could have that totally wrong. Uh, his name was Scar. So this is like under Scar. And here's Gull's house. Someone who lives down here is said to live under Scar. Hey, Gulls. Okay, Outlander, but make it quick. I'm gonna buy some spells from you. Someone told me you have Mark and Recall. Now, the beauty of Mark and Recall is that you basically can... It's sort of hard to explain, actually. Let me check out the rest of his stuff here and see if I want any of this stuff. And that's all I needed. Thanks, Gulls. So here's what Mark and Recall do. I'm out here on Gull's balcony. I'm going to pull out my Mark spell. And by casting this, if I cast it successfully, which I probably won't do very often... There we go. I cast it successfully. Now this space is marked. You can actually see it on my map, I believe. Marked. That's what the X means. X marks the spot. So I'm going to go back through his house, and I'm going to run over here, and so up there is the balcony where I did it, where I marked. Now when I cast the Recall spell, if I succeed before I run out of Magicka, which I might not, I don't have enough Magicka left. If you don't mind, Tell me I've got some Restore Magicka here. Hang on now, I don't want to drink all of them. Drink two of them. <laughs> So now if I cast Recall and succeed, it's a kind of a tough spell. So it takes a few tries for a low-level character. Ah! When you cast Recall successfully, you are instantly teleported to wherever you cast Mark last. And so we just went from down there to up here. Poof! It doesn't seem very exciting right now, but uh, the value of it, it... Ouch. The value of it is that you can Mark anywhere, and you can warp back in for, from pretty much anywhere. So, not a really big deal. Uh, it was kind of a kind of a neat That's thing when I when I first discovered it, when I first played Morrowind as a kid. I never could get my character to do it well because, for one thing, I didn't know to come here to Gulls to buy the two of them. Because a lot of people sell one or the other, but it's hard to find somebody who has both of them in it for sale. And Gulls just has so many different spells available that he was uh, the perfect guy for us. So we're getting a little bit beat up here. I'm out of Magicka, and my fatigue is low because I've been running everywhere, which means we're not going to be very successful if anything decides to attack us. In general, you're pretty safe in the towns. You're not going to get attacked by much, unless it wanders in from like the, the outside of town. But even then, it's fairly rare. So what I'm going to do is... I'm going to go... back to Sedanine via the Silt Strider, I believe. Because, well... Come on, I haven't got all no, there's a couple more places we need to go, actually. And one of them, I believe, we can get to will be the Guild Warp. The Guild Guide. I don't know how long... I feel like this episode's gone on for a while, though. I need to find a bed, is what I need to do. It's one of our... <laughs> acrobatics increased. Is this owned? Doesn't look like it. One of the benefits of being in the Guild is that we can use the Guild... Guild Beds, like that one, apparently, is just open for use. So now we're totally healed, our magic is back, and our fatigue is restored, and our health would go back up as well if it had been damaged. Actually, it was damaged, and now it's back up. Cool. So, I'm going to talk to you. I'd like to go to Sadrith Mora, please. Thank you.